Hi, my name is Dave Ferguson, and as the lead pastor of Community Christian Church, I want to be the first to welcome you to Community Online. I'm here to let you know that myself and our staff would love the opportunity to care for you and equip you on your spiritual journey, no matter where you're joining us from. And we can do that through our locations in Chicagoland, and we can also do that online. But to do that, we have to get to know each other. So if you're new to community, welcome. We're thrilled you're joining us. The best way for you to let us know you're here is by checking in. Take a moment and use your camera app to scan the QR code on the screen or click the link in the chat, and a member of our team will connect with you this week. Let's get to know each other. Check in so we can learn your name and reach out to you in the next couple of days. One of the ways we care for you is by praying for you. Don't go through stuff on your own. Reach out for prayer at any time by texting PRAY to 331 226 1686, or by clicking the prayer button. Our prayer team is standing by and would love to pray for you. As your pastor, if there's anything I can do to help you grow spiritually or take your next step here at Community, I'd like to encourage you to reach out directly to me. That's my email, and it'll come directly to me. I told you, I really want to get to know you. Here at Community, we are passionate about helping you find your way back to God, and today's experience is designed to do just that. So let's do that right now, together.
Here at Community, we are passionate about what we believe, and we are also passionate about putting those beliefs into practice. One of these practices is called child dedication. When we dedicate children, we are following an example that was given to us by Jesus' own family. Not long after Jesus was born, Joseph and Mary brought Jesus to the temple in Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Child dedication is an opportunity to publicly express our commitment to raising our children with God's guidance and submitting ourselves to His will. It's a time to invite family and friends to support you as you dedicate your children to the Lord. The church gathers around a family and supports them as they commit themselves to raising their child to know and follow Jesus. Before dedicating your child, we ask parents to attend a child dedication class. During the class, we walk through what child dedication means, why parents make this commitment, and how community is here to partner with them. Child dedications are held in the spring and late fall. We love to hold these dedications in the presence of our church family because we know that the best way to raise a child to know and follow Jesus is in a Christ-following community. After the parents make their commitment to raise their children to know and follow Jesus, we always turn to you, the people who make up the Community Christian Church family, and ask you to make a commitment too. It's what being the church is all about. We love celebrating child dedications as a church family, and I'm excited because today we get to celebrate them right here on Community Online. Let me turn things over to Kids City Director May Ferrer as she leads us in our very first Community Online Child Dedications. Happy Sunday, community. My name is May Ferrer, and I'm the Kids City Director for our Naperville location, but I get the honor to join you here today to celebrate one of the most favorite Sundays of mine, and today is Child Dedication Day, and we have two families joining us, and we get to celebrate and walk alongside them today for Child Dedication. So I want to turn it over to Carrie Latticer to get us started. Hey, welcome everybody. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Uh, my name is Carrie and I serve as the community pastor at our Naperville location and I get to teach and host at Community Online from time to time. It is great to be here with you. Just as May said, this is one of our favorite days. We're honored to host you and your family for this significant moment together. Uh, our child dedication celebrations are a moment in time when the church as a whole gathers around a family and supports them as they commit themselves to raising their children to follow Jesus. And in the past few seasons, uh, we have learned new ways to come together as one church uh, in multiple expressions. So no matter where you live, no matter where your family lives, we have learned that we can still be together. Uh, one church, one body, one family. And as you see, uh, today we get together together to be a part of dedicating uh, your children to the Lord. So thank you, friends, for joining us. It's so good to be here with you and see these beautiful babies uh, and get to celebrate you and your families together. We know that when we celebrate and dedicate children, uh, we're following the example that was given to us by Jesus' own family. In Luke 2, not very long after Jesus was born, Joseph and Mary brought Jesus to the temple in Jerusalem to be dedicated. And the passage actually says uh, they were there to present him to the Lord. And today you follow in this example as you present and dedicate your children to the Lord. We know this is a significant day for all of us here, for the babies and the children being dedicated. They're fortunate and blessed to have a family committed to working together to provide a supportive and helpful environment for these babies to grow in. Uh, for the families and friends gathered here today, we're going to ask you to pledge to encourage these families during tough times, to celebrate the good times, to hold them accountable to the commitment that these parents are making here today. And for the parents, congratulations, you're making a huge, wonderful decision today to step forward and publicly dedicate yourselves and your children to following Jesus together. So 
there's no greater gift that we believe that you could offer your children. And so we just honor you together as you take this step. Uh, at this point, I want to give you a chance to introduce yourself and your families, and then I'm going to ask uh, a question of dedication to each one of you. So let's get started uh, with Garrett and Nicole. Introduce yourself to us and tell us who this is you have with you who's being dedicated. Hi, um, I am Nicole Lems. This is my husband, Garrett Lems, and we have Kennedy Ray Lems here with us today. Hi, Kennedy. She was very talkative just a second ago, so. <laughs> oh, great. Oh, I think she's waving to us, too. That's awesome. Um, we've been attending community for about two and a half years. Uh, we recently got married and had her, and so we're very excited to be dedicating her today. Awesome. We're so excited to be here with you guys. Uh, okay, Garrett and Nicole, I'm going to ask you a question, and I'm sure that you're going to answer with a loud and convincing yes, uh, and I'll give you the opportunity to answer, but do you commit yourselves to raising Kennedy in a Christian home, uh, providing her opportunities for Christian growth and nurture and dedicating yourselves as an example of committed Christians for her? Yes, we do. Awesome. Awesome. So good. So good, Kennedy. Uh, okay. And then we also have Nate and Lizzie. Would you two introduce yourselves and uh, introduce your boys as well? We would love to. So this is Zeke and this is Silas. So two in six months and I am Lizzie and this is my husband, Nate. And we've been at community for almost, yeah, 18 months, 19 months. <laughs> No longer than that. I can't yeah. do that. Yeah. And I can tell Zeke is so excited about that, right? Yeah. And Lizzie is on staff at our Lincoln Park location, a physical expression. So I'm sure they get to spend a lot of time at church with you. Uh, same thing here, Nate and Lizzie. I'm going to ask you a question. I'm sure you're going to answer with a loud and resounding yes. But do you commit yourselves to raising both Zeke and Silas in a Christian home, uh, providing them with opportunities for Christian growth and nurture and dedicating yourselves as an example of committed Christians for them? Yes. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. This is so good. We love to hold these dedications also in the presence of our church family, because we know the best way to raise a child in a Christ following family is with a Christ following community. It's not perfect, uh, but it's one more way that we can be the church to each other and come around you, support you and pray for you as you make this decision today. So my last question is for everyone who's here with us online, or if you're watching this on demand, do you promise to help these families raise their children to know and follow Jesus? Do you promise to love them and challenge them to keep the commitments that they made today? And if so, you can answer out loud, we do. I'm going to answer on behalf of our online church family and say we do. Of course we do. Yes, of course we do. It's so good, May. Uh, I want to wrap up this part of the dedication by saying a prayer on behalf of our church community and as one more indication of our collective commitment to each other. Would you extend your hands right where you are, just towards your camera, uh, towards your TV as you're watching in, in an expression of your commitment to support and to encourage each other? And then uh, would you pray with me? Uh, God, please, we invite you to bless the commitments that were made today, to bless these parents with wisdom, God, when they don't know what to do, to bless them with patience, Lord, when they are at their wits end, to bless them with abundance of your unconditional love. Help them to be good stewards of these children, knowing ultimately that they are a beautiful gift created in your image coming directly from you. And finally, Lord, help them to truly enjoy every phase of their children's lives. As we know, the days are often very long, but the years pass all too quickly. God, we love you and we thank you for the gift of these children as a part of our faith family. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. I'm going to turn it back over to you, May. 
So thank you all for joining us today. Um, we are so, so, so honored to be here to be able to celebrate these two families with us, as well as our families um, in our in-person services today. Um, I just want to say how grateful Kid City is uh, to be able to partner with you and support you parents. And don't forget that we are there for you and we want to be there for you every step of the way. So don't forget to lean on us. Um, we're happy to be there to partner with you. Um, we believe that parents are the first, the first line um, of teachers and you guys are, you know, partnered together. God knew the kids that they gave you would need you. And God also knew that you as parents are needed for these kids. So we're grateful for you and we're honored to be here to celebrate you today. I loved that. Thanks for being a part of it. And also thank you for joining us today for Community Online. My name is Natalia Heckerman and I would love to know your name. That's why I wanna invite you to check in with me either in the community app or by using your camera to hover over the QR code on the screen. This simple step is so important because the Christ following life is meant to be lived together. By checking in, you are letting us know that you are here and that you are part of this community which gives us the opportunity to connect with you. When you check in, you'll also have access to our digital program, The Community Weekly. And also everyone who checks in today will be in a drawing for some awesome community merch. Now, if you're watching on your phone, don't worry. You can check in at any time later and still have an opportunity to win the merch. But I wanna encourage everyone who is watching to take this simple step of checking in because we wanna know you and be on this mission of helping people find their way back to God together. And while you have your phone out, I'd love for you to share this link via text or social media with your friends and family members. We'd love for them to join us too. At this point in our service, let's also take a moment to give back to God. We are so grateful for every person who contributes to the mission here at Community through tithes and offerings. Whether you are celebrating with us online, in person, through Community Freedom, or in a 3C community, it's your generosity that makes these four expressions of our church possible. So I encourage you to give right now. You can give through the Community app or by texting GIVE to 331-226-1686 or by scanning the QR code below. You can also send a check to our mailing address in Naperville. And as you give, let's get ready to hear from community pastor John Ferguson as he shares the next message in our series, What Do Christians Really Believe? Thanksgiving is coming in a couple of weeks. And for many of us, it will mean another round of navigating time with family. The holiday season can be tricky, can't it? I remember one of the first times I went to my wife's family for a Thanksgiving dinner. I'd been there for other celebrations and I mean, the food was out of this world. Uh, this side of her family is mostly Mexican. So when we got together, we'd enjoy some of the very best tamales, rice and beans, enchiladas. And so I couldn't wait to join them for Thanksgiving and see how they spiced up a traditional Thanksgiving dinner. You know, turkey, mashed potatoes and gravy, cornbread dressing, sweet potato casserole, swimming in melted marshmallows and brown sugar. Anybody hungry? <laughs> but when we arrived, much to my surprise and dismay, there was no sweet potato casserole. Uh, there was no cornbread dressing, no mashed potatoes and gravy. There wasn't even turkey. No turkey, they had ham. I was beside myself. You can't do Thanksgiving without turkey. <laughs> well, they did have pumpkin pie. So when we got to dessert, it was finally starting to feel more like Thanksgiving. But as we gather with our family in the weeks to come, each of us will experience the holidays and family in a different way. For some of us, it will be a reminder of loss and we'll look for those moments of joy. Others of us will experience holidays filled with hope and laughter. And some might run into missed expectations, maybe even no turkey. Uh, but that's part of the beauty and complexity of family. 
You know, one of the pr prominent metaphors for the church in Scripture is family. Now, we are brothers and sisters in Christ. And if you haven't figured it out yet, this family can also be quirky, sometimes even difficult. You know, this season, the last 18 to 24 months, maybe more than any other, has been tough. As a church, we've been through unprecedented times. Uh, we went months without gathering in person. We've experienced staff transitions, people moving away. We, we've dealt with disagreements and conflict over a variety of issues. I mean, this has been a quirky and hard season. Our family has been through a lot. But today, I wanna talk about why this family called the church is so important and why it's so worth fighting for. Uh, the church plays a critically important role in the story we've been telling, the true story of King Jesus and his kingdom community. So to start, let me make sure you understand what I mean when I even say church. You see, the church is not a building. The church is not a service. The church is a people. Uh, the church is a people, a kingdom community. In the true story of King Jesus and his kingdom community, the kingdom community is the church. But why do we need the church? And why is it so important? Well, I'd answer that question with three simple words about how God works with, among, and through. With, among, and through. Make sense? Everybody got it? Okay, let's close in prayer. I'm kidding. I have a few more thoughts on this. The first reason the church is so important has to do with this first word, with. With. God has always chosen to be present with a people. We see this in both the Old Testament and the New Testament. In the Garden of Eden, before the fall, God is present with Adam and Eve. When God sets his plan of restoration in motion by choosing a people, the people of Israel, he chooses to be present with them in the tabernacle. Later, his presence is with them in the temple. Then Jesus comes to earth to be present with his people. He's called Emmanuel, which means God with us. And then after Jesus dies, come back to life and returns to the Father, the church becomes the new people of God, the kingdom community where God is present with us through the Holy Spirit. And then finally, we look forward to a time when we will dwell with God for all eternity in a renewed creation. God wants to be present with his people. And as we've talked about in this series, God's desire has always been to have a kingdom community. This is a predominant theme throughout scripture. Uh, Scottish minister George F. McLeod says the Bible is all about community, from the Garden of Eden to the city at the end. It's all about it. From the very beginning to the very end, God's desire was and is to be in community like a family with us. I mean, think of Jesus. When he walked among us, he did so with a community of his people. He appointed 12 close followers so that they might be what? Right, with him. Author and missiologist David Fitch puts it this way. Uh, the fundamental answer to the why church question is, presence is the way God works. Therefore, for God to work the way he chooses to work requires a people for God to be present to and to make space for God to be made known in the world. The first reason the church is so important is that God has always chosen to be present with a community of people. You know, it makes me think of my relationship with my own kids. Um, they both live in New York right now. I don't know, about 800 miles away. I mean, thank goodness for technology. I can text them, call them, or FaceTime them at a, mo at a moment's notice. But, you know, there's nothing like actually being with them. I mean, I love to be with them face-to-face -face, in their presence. And in the same way, our Father God wants to be with His children, with His people, us, the church. The second reason the church is so important has to do with the word among. God works among us when we gather as his people. The Apostle Paul speaks to us about the church using some vivid language. And I want you to listen to this and understand that this is who we are. He says, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone in him. The whole building is joined together and, and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. Did you notice Paul uses three metaphors, citizens, household, building, to make his point. 
We are to be built up together. You see, much of the transformation God wants to do in your life happens when we are together and God chooses to work among us. I'm a part of a men's group that uh, meets on Thursday mornings. And we're all at different places in our spiritual journey. And it's interesting, each of us are going through various challenges as we you know, navigate life and figure out what it looks like to keep Jesus on the throne and not something or someone else. Uh, one of the guys recently retired and moved to Colorado. And, and before the move, he had leadership responsibilities that would keep any of us awake at night. And now that he's retired, he's kind of lost and trying to figure out what's next. Another guy runs in political circles, and he's trying to learn what it looks like to be a Christ follower first and keep his loyalties politically a distant second or third or fourth. Another guy is going through a really hard season relationally, and and he was telling me the other day how this group has made a world of difference as he walks through this tough season. He said to me, he said, you know, John, there's something that happens when we're together that keeps me headed in the right direction. You see, that something is the way God works among us in his kingdom community. As we follow King Jesus together, we experience God working among us. The notion that you can follow King Jesus apart from his kingdom community, the church, is simply false. And let's be honest. I mean, for us to truly become the kingdom community God desires, it's gonna require a significant investment from each of us. Uh, Dr. Jeffrey Hall, a communications professor at the University of Kansas, recently, did some research about how time invested impacts the closeness of a friendship. In general, Hall found that it took 40 to 60 hours to form a casual friendship, but between 160 to 200 hours to really become good friends. Yeah, time spent together was a key predictor of friendship closeness. But the type of activity also made a difference. Time spent at work or in class together actually predicted lower closeness, but time spent hanging out without an agenda predicted higher closeness. And the kind of talk while together was also important. Small talk about things like pets, sports, or movies predicted lower closeness over time. But what Hall called striving talk about what was actually happening in people's lives led to greater closeness. I'd say this study tells us what we already know deep down, that if we don't give these relationships time and if we don't go deep, we will miss out on the redemptive work God wants to do among us. Jesus said, for where two or three gather in my name, there am I with them. See, there's something fundamentally different about how Jesus is present or among us when we're together as opposed to when we're alone. And that's why throughout this series, we've stressed that following Jesus involves more than just a personal decision. It also involves a commitment to God's kingdom community. And part of that commitment is coming together for worship, teaching, and communion like Christians have for centuries. It's a regular time where we can expect Jesus to be present among us. And I don't know about you, but I need that every week, at least every week. A third reason why the church is so important is this. God works through us when we live as his kingdom community. God works through us when we live as his kingdom community. Now, take a look at what it looked like when the church first formed. And as I read this, take note of how you see God at work through his people. Maybe even write it down. If you have access to the chat, put it in the chat room or put it on a post-it note somewhere. What most impresses you here? What makes you say, I want more of that? Uh, This is from Acts 2. Luke, the historian, writes this. Those who accepted his message, this is Peter's message he just taught, were baptized. And about 3,000 were added to their number that day. 3,000. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day, they continued to meet in the temple courts. We think every week is a lot. They met every day. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. What an amazing community. I mean, God was at work through them in so many incredible ways. 
Huge numbers of people were finding their way back to God, getting baptized, 3,000 in one day. Uh, they met together every day publicly in the temple courts and in their homes where they devoted themselves to learning, growing, and praying together. Uh, this kingdom community was in awe of the wonders and miracles that were happening among them. They shared everything they had with each other. Some even sold stuff to make sure that there were no needy people among them. They ate together and praised God for what he was doing among them. And God's work through them was so attractive, so appealing that they enjoyed the favor of all the people. And every day people were choosing to follow Jesus and become a part of this irresistible community. I mean, this was a church community even outsiders couldn't help but like. Last month, our, our Lincoln Park location hosted a free fall fest in a local park for families of our community. And, and there was a bouncy house, face painting, games, crafts, and, and of course, food and drink for everyone. Dozens of families who prior to that day knew nothing about community gathered at the park to enjoy a fun-filled Saturday morning. And the volunteers from Community Christian Church could not have been more kind, warm, friendly. And it may be a meager comparison to what we read about from this first kingdom of community, but you know what? It was clear that God was at work through us on that morning. And I, and I wonder, maybe it was just a glimpse of what it looks like to enjoy the favor of all the people. I mean, that morning people noticed, asked questions, and wanted to know who was this church that was bringing so much joy to their neighborhood? You see, I, I love how Luke describes this community in verse 46. He writes that they were doing what they were doing with Glad and sincere hearts. Glad and sincere hearts. There, there was a joy and authenticity about what they were doing together that was contagious. Uh, you know, as I was working on this talk, I, I read where one Scottish pastor uh, used to say that it would help the church more than anything else if Christians would do a Bonnie thing. I wish I had a Scottish accent, but I won't try that. And so I wondered, you know, what is a Bonnie thing? Anyone know? If you know what a Bonnie thing is, put it in the chat if you have access to it. But, you know, my good friend Google helped me discover that in Scotland, if you want to refer to something winsome and beautiful, you might say it is a Bonnie thing. You see, in the early church, there was a winsomeness in God's people. They were doing a Bonnie thing. Let's be honest, folks. I mean, the church has some PR work to do. And I'm not speaking of community specifically, but the church in general. I'm not sure most people consider us a Bonnie thing. And yet we are. And we certainly can be when we let God work through us as only He can. You see, the church plays a critically important role in the story we've been telling of King Jesus and His kingdom community. It's why we want you to find your home here at Community. And, and we believe there are three connections that help us live out this idea of Jesus being with us, among us, and working through us. We want you to develop deep connections with God, with each other, and with the world. Deep connections with God, with each other, and with the world. So, so what does that look like? Uh, how do we connect deeply with God? Well, we do that when we spend time with Him on our own through prayer and scripture reading. And we do that together when we worship together on Sundays or when we celebrate online or in 3C communities. You see, God is with us in these places. We connect with the church, each other, when we gather in small groups or serve on ministry teams. I mean, small groups really are where the real stuff of community happens. It's where we commit the 160 to 200 hours to grow deep relationships. It's where we pray for each other, encourage one another, and hold each other accountable to grow in our faith. Ministry teams are where we learn to get outside of ourselves and use the gifts God has given us to serve one another in the church. It's in these places that God works among us in ways he simply doesn't on our own. And then finally, we connect with the world when we live out what we call the blessed practices. It's an acrostic that, that helps us follow the example of Jesus who blessed the people and places he encountered every single day. We begin with prayer. We listen, uh, we eat together, we serve in loving and practical ways, and we tell our story of how King Jesus has made a difference in our lives. We can also connect with the world when we join one of our community cares teams or support one of our global partners and when we give back to God financially. All of these are ways that God works through us to change the world. And community is all about deepening these three connections with God, with the church, and with the world. This is who we believe God wants us to be and what we believe God wants us to do. So while we recognize that everyone is on a journey, we will always challenge you to find your way back to God and take next steps to deepen these three connections. I want to wrap up with a story about two guys, uh, Gary and Randy. 
they worked together every day at a furniture delivery company. Um, Gary would lift one end of the couch and Randy the other. Uh, people said they looked alike, but they chalked it up to coincidence. Uh, Randy had been researching his family history and found out he was adopted. He learned that both of his parents had died, but that they had another son born June 10th, 1974. So then on another furniture delivery run, when a customer once again commented on how much Randy looked like Gary, Randy started nonchalantly asking Gary some personal questions like, when is your birthday? As soon as he said his birthday, I knew, Randy said, Gary is my brother. They'd grown up in neighboring towns and attended rival schools, only a year apart in age, and never knew about each other. It was a shock to both of them. Phenomenal, said Gary. I still can't wrap my head around it. A coworker, Greg Berry, said, there's nothing like family, especially when you don't have one. Now they've got it. But that's not all. Uh, After their story appeared in a local paper, a teary-eyed woman showed up at the brother's workplace clutching a birth certificate. Uh, She was their half-sister, born five or six years before the two men to the same mother. After all these years, she said in an interview, I finally found my brothers. And you know, our prayer is that you will have a similar experience here at Community. That as we give ourselves to this church and take our place in God's kingdom community, we too will discover that people we thought were strangers are actually our brothers and sisters. Remember, God's presence is with us and He wants to work among us so that he can make a difference through us. Welcome to church. Welcome to the family. Every family has traditions, practices that define who they are and often bond them together. Our family, the family of God, this kingdom community has traditions too. And one of the most meaningful is the moment when we come together to celebrate communion. Communion is a time when we symbolically gather around the table to remember what unites us, the body and the blood of Jesus. He is our rock, our anchor, the cornerstone on which our family is built. So let's prepare our hearts to remember His sacrifice by singing His praises. Jesus is King. He is Lord, Lord of all. Weakness is wrong in the 
He is Lord, Lord of all. And in this moment, we remember His sacrifice, His body, which was broken for you and for me. And His blood, which was shed for you and for me. He is Lord, Lord of all. Would you pray with me? Dear Lord, thank you so much for inviting us into what you call the church, for allowing us to be members of your family and participators and helping people find their way back to God. I ask that as we go about our weeks that you will help us remember who you want us to reach out so that they can be family and part of the church that you designed. We love you, amen. Before you go, let me remind you of the big idea John shared with us today. We believe the church is God's kingdom community, joined together in allegiance to King Jesus and called to live out shared practices that help more and more people find their way back to God. You are a part of this family called the church, and we'd love to help you take the next steps to grow in the three connections of community. I encourage you to visit communitychristian.info to learn about ways you can get involved. And let me also encourage you to be praying about who you could invite to become part of this family. There is someone you know who would love to be invited to join us next week for Community Online. This week, ask God to put specific people on your heart and mind, and then reach out to them and share this link to invite them. Together, let's help more people find their way back to God. I'm so glad you joined us today, and I pray that God met you in a meaningful and powerful way. If you're new, remember to check in so we can connect with you. You've already taken your first step, and we want to help you figure out what's next. Everything you need to take your next steps here at Community can be found at communitychristian.info. We would love to help you connect through a small group or by joining a team. We have in-person and online options for both. Or if you found your way back to God, we'd love to help you take your next step and get baptized. Don't hesitate. Take that next step today, and we'll see you right back here next week for Community Online.